Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to show you uh, how I make my vegan stuffed olives. Now, right here, I'm just going to push some of this away. Uh, this is the minced meat that I made, and then it's seasoned with uh, with nutmeg and clove. But you want to be able to taste the nutmeg and the uh, the clove inside your um, inside your your mixture. Now, this is the seitan that I make by washing the um, the flour and pulling the gluten out of it, and then I cook it with a very simple uh, simple broth of uh, onion, carrots, uh, a celery. Uh, I put uh, a, just a little bit of soy in there. You don't want too much because then it's going to fall into the Asian taste and you don't want that. You want it more of an Italian taste. I do put nutmeg and clove. Uh, I put some garlic and um, and then I, I put the meat, uh, the seitan. I put it to simmer. And you're going to know when it's ready because it's going to be like double or triple the size. But you don't want that water to boil. Otherwise, you're going to get a very spongy seitan. You want a nice firm seitan. Then what I do is I mince uh, the amount that I want to use. And you mince it till it gets pretty pasty. And along with this, I do put a handful of cooked rice. So it just kind of helps bond it a little more. And what else you're going to need is olives green olives i get the ones with the uh pimento in it because it makes my life very easy and i'll tell you why because my mother used to buy these big green olives and we had to sit there and peel them in a circle we would literally grab that olive with a knife and it would take the whole day to do it and we basically would peel the olive but not break the peel not break the olive you would just keep going into a spiral mo motion and till you remove the pit and then you would have these coils that you would wrap around uh, the meat that you minced so to make my life easy I take one of these and I cut them in four so I cut them this way I cut them again this way don't look at the way I'm cutting with my hand underneath but I've been doing this for so long I will not cut myself so this is how I cut my uh, my olive and like I said, this will make my life a lot easier. My mother's probably saying to herself, I mean, she's not with us. My mom's passed away now. It's over 30 year, years. But she's probably saying, Connie, you're lazy. But yes, I am lazy. I'm not going to spend the whole day peeling olives when I can make my life easy just by cutting it this way. And then I have my... As you could tell, I started, so this is nice and thick already, but I will add some water. This is miso and flax seeds. This is going to be my egg, so I'm just going to add some water to this. And basically, you want it like a runny egg. That's the texture you want. It. You don't want it too watery, and you don't want it too thick. If you see it's getting thick on you because you're working with it, just add a little bit of water and... Uh, and dilute it and eventually you're going to have to make another little batch by adding some miso and my dog's having fun with the cats as you can tell just by adding some miso and some ground flax or ground chia and you make your egg mixture i've got my bread and again it's plain bread but i do add my chicken powder and i put about a tablespoon or two depending how much bread um, you're using uh, so just taste it and if it's fine for you then like you don't have to go crazy um, you don't have to go crazy and making it too salty just a little bit so it has that little bit of taste to your breadcrumbs because your breadcrumbs are very plain because we don't have uh, cheese in our breadcrumbs but you can if you want add some uh, cheese to your breadcrumbs if you have vegan grated cheese you could add that or you can leave it plain, really it's up to you. I do add my chicken base, and that's how I like it, so that's how I'm gonna do it. And then we have here, as you can see, I started it. I have a mixture of flour and tapioca starch. So I'm just gonna show you how I would do it. And this really makes my life a lot easier. I'm just gonna take a little bit of meat, not much. The size of a small olive. And then we're gonna take these 
wedges and we're going to just stick them to the side and we've got one two and i would say three that's how much i normally put around and a, a little piece of meat and maybe just a little extra meat because it's a little smaller you want it to be almost back to the size well, a little bigger but almost back to the size of the olive that you cut now these are the larger olives and then we're going to take this and we're going to throw it into our starch starch and flour mixture it's going to go into our egg our flak egg mixture <clears throat> sorry if you've got everything you need around you it's going to go pretty fast and we're going to drop these right into the breadcrumbs i'm just going to move this over so i can show you And then we're going to kind of shape it like an olive. So it's going to be almost like an egg. Where the point. And just keep rolling it. You don't want these round. I mean you can make them round. But you want them to shape them like an olive. And that's it. You put it aside. And as you can see I already started. And I'm just going to keep layering. I'm going to put plastic over this. Or get another plate. And these are going to get frozen or refrigerator until I need to cook them for um, for New Year's because I have everyone coming over my house for New Year's and that's how simple it is to make these stuffed olives and these are really really amazing and they're very uh, where my parents came from Italy uh, Abruzzi uh, this is something that is a, a custom a custom of ours but I'll tell you something they keep telling me are you making the stuffed olives are you making the stuffed olives so here they are, very simple. Um, I'm not going to show you what they look like cooked because I haven't, uh, I haven't done one. Maybe I'll cook one or two just to show you. But um, very easy, uh, very easy to make. Like I said, the meat. I mean, you could try making the meat with the um, with the vital wheat gluten and see how you like it. Uh, but I use uh, the meat that I. Um, I make myself by washing the flour. That's what I use when I make these stuffed olives. I find it has a complete different taste to it. But if you know how to dress your meat and you know how to season it right, you will not have um, that gluteny or that weedy taste. It will actually taste like what you're trying to mimic. Let it be a hamburger or some pork meat or uh, again, like this would be the way I seasoned it. It pretty much gives you that taste that we are accustomed to. My mother used to mix chicken, veal, and pork to make these stuffed olives. She would cut up that meat, cook it, and then she would mince her meat. And uh, she would make her stuffed olives out of it. And I remember the taste of basically the nutmeg and the clove. And the onion and that's what you're going to mimic when you make your meat so you're not going to get that taste of of wheat you're going to get that beautiful taste of the stuffed olives that you either were accustomed to or um new to trying you just like smash against oh my God. me is he okay hello my dog decided he wanted to go through my glass patio door he's young and silly right now but okay? here you go very simple I make my meat by washing the flour and uh, cooking it and then I mince it and season it the way I want with salt nutmeg cloves I add some in the water some I add by um, just by adding it to the uh, to the meat with some black pepper and then I just cut my olives this way which makes it a lot easier for me rather than sitting there and peeling the olives and uh, you should give these a try and tell me what you think these are great finger food and if you have the time you could also make some and freeze them and when you need them and if you have either your husband and his buddies come over to watch a football game or a hockey game uh, you could take some of these out of the freezer and fry up fry some up for them and 
they're going to have some fantastic finger food to uh, to munch on and um, or just make them for whatever occasion let it be Christmas New Year's like I'm doing for New Year's and if I was doing Christmas I'm sure I would have I would have done the same thing I would have made a batch for Christmas Day or just make them for whatever let it be a birthday and you're having people over just make them so you can pull them out of the uh, out of the freezer all you have to do is fry them up and with some pizza and you've got finger food for your family but these are fantastic you really have to try it. if you love olives this is a must so starch A gouache, breadcrumbs, very easy, I just leave them there and so here we go, starch, A gouache, and breadcrumbs. That's it. Shape them and put them on a plate. I always put cellophane at the bottom of the plate and then lay these on top so nothing gets stuck. Shape them like an olive. And then all you have to do is fry these little guys up and enjoy them. Perfect finger food. And for that little, that little bit, look at the difference. I'm going to show you something. Look how big this is. And when I'm preparing it, because I'm taking just a little bit of meat. And then I'm going to put my olive, three pieces of olives. There we go. And then into the starch. Notice how small this is compared to that. But by the time you roll it into the starch, into the egg wash, or the flaxseed wash, into my breadcrumbs it gets to be just as big because of all the layers these are going to be nice and crunchy and that's it guys so i hope you enjoy this recipe and uh if i don't get to talk to you before um before new year's i'm hoping that i can post this before new year's so this way you guys can give them a try. But if I don't get to talk to you again in another video, I wish you all a happy new year. And again, do not drink and drive, guys. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you soon.